Hello friends, this video on reproduction in organisms part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us quickly look at the relation between reproduction and inheritance and variation. So let us take an example in order, in order to understand the concept of inheritance and variation in relation to reproduction. Now let us suppose you have to design a car. Let us suppose this is the car that needs to be designed. Now how do you think the car gets designed? So does the engineers directly come and start designing a car? So what do they do is they first prepare a blueprint for the car. So which looks somewhat like this. That is how will it look from top? How would it look from the side? How would it look from front, from back? So it, it a blueprint is designed like this, which will have the sketches of each and every minute detail. Now once the blueprint is ready, then the engineers and the workers can start working on actually assembling the parts and then designing the first model of the Car. So that is how the car gets designed. Now similarly, when you talk about designing the body of a human being, how does it get designed? What is the blueprint for the body? So the blueprint is nothing but the DNA. You remember DNA? We spoke about DNA in our previous classes, that is deoxyribonucleic acid. So DNA basically contains the sequence of the proteins which tells how that the behavior or how the structure of that organism has to be. So it is decided DNA is nothing but the blueprint of the body. Now the question is where is this DNA located? Now DNA contains all the information and it is located in the gene. And where is the gene located? It is located in the chromosome. So here you can see this entire structure is the chromosome. And where is the gene? The yellow colored strands which you see here, they are gene. So when you magnify them, they can you can actually see DNA arranged in this fashion. Now where is the chromosome located? Chromosome is located inside the nucleus. So if you see, this is the nucleus and inside the nucleus you can see the red colored thread like structures. But when you magnify the thread like structure, this is how it looks like. And where is the nucleus located? The nucleus is located inside the cell. So here you can see the nucleus and the cell is located inside the body. Inside the, in fact, the body is made up of a large number of cells like this. And inside every cell you have a nucleus. Inside the nucleus you have chromosome where you have the gene and where you have the DNA. So DNA is the information source for making proteins. And if the information in DNA is altered, then different proteins will be synthesized. Now, based on whatever proteins get synthesized, that decides how the structure and behavior of the new organism is going to be. Now, during the process of reproduction, what happens is that DNA copies are made. So this is the parent DNA, right? So let us suppose this is the father. So a father will have a DNA. Similarly, mother will also have a DNA. So for their production purpose, DNA copies are made inside the body of each parent. And then the copies from both the parents will combine to form the child. Now, if exact DNA copy is made in case of the child, then there will be no variation at all. Because if DNA is going to be exactly the same in two organisms, if their DNA are exactly the same, that means both the organisms will be exactly similar. They'll have similar eyes, similar nose, similar hair, everything has to be similar. They'll be exactly identical. But if the DNA is exact, not exactly same, even if there is a little difference in the DNA, maybe a little difference in the sequence of proteins, the way it is synthesized, that means there will be some variations. Now, exact copy of DNA is generally not prepared and that is why you see that the kids are not always exactly identical to their parents. Now, the significance of variation. Now, as I said, accumulation of variation over a period of time gives rise to new species. And that is what you can see here. So, let us suppose these are the, the, this dog, it has got long hair, long ears. So, this one has long ears. So, now when this reproduces further, all the dogs which are produced will have long ears. So, that is how you get one particular variety of dog with long ears. Similarly, there will be some dogs with 
spotted body so that again becomes a trend over a period of time so that is our new species so here in this case we are talking only about different varieties of dog in fact different organisms also get produced due to variations for example if you look at a cat and a tiger they are not the same right but they share a lot of similarity which shows that they evolved from each other so due to some variations and gradually the variations keep kept on accumulating and that is why they gave they became two different species altogether it helps in survival of a species over time as i said so now when there is variation sometimes what happens is the variation is for good so the variation is for the betterment of the organism for example sometimes it happens that these dogs maybe suppose initially these dogs were more prevalent but these dogs were not able to survive in extremely cold weather so what happened a variation came in where the new variety of dog which was produced had a lot of fur all over its body now the pre presence of fur all over its body helped it to survive in extremely cold conditions so this was a better variation in some sense so as a result it helped in the survival of the species over time so more and more dogs with fur started to get uh, produced and it helped in helped them to survive in extremely cold weather so now that we got some brief idea about uh, reproduction let us look at the various ways the reproduction takes place Now broadly there are two types of reproduction that is asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction so we will see what are each of them however i know that the basics are already been taught to you so you have studied it in class 10 but however we will study it in more detail here so first we will take up asexual reproduction So let us see what is asexual reproduction. Here, a single parent is needed to produce the organism. So you do not need one male and one female. So just you need just one organism, and that organism alone can produce new organism. So therefore, no sex is involved. That is, no confusion of male and female. No confusion of having interaction between the male organism and the female organism. So nothing like that is involved here. on the other hand in sexual reproduction it involves two parents so in sexual reproduction there is fusion between the male and the female gametes to give rise to the new organism so here there are two parents which are involved one is male and the other one is female so this male and female they the gametes they each of them produce gametes what are gametes gametes are nothing but the sex cells this is another term for the sex cells they each will produce sex cells and they will both fuse together to form the daughter or to form the new organism so that is the sexual reproduction so here in sexual reproduction there is very distinct differentiation between the sexes like the male and female sexes and also the daughter which is produced is genetically different from the parents so it is not exactly identical to the parents because the daughter will have mixed traits of both the parents so it is not identical exactly so there will be some traits similar to the parents whereas some new traits will also be seen which is termed as variations and here the process is quite slow that is the multiplication rate is slow it is not very fast whereas in case of asexual reproduction here what happens the daughters which are produced are exactly identical to the parent because there is no sex differentiation of male and female now since the daughter is exactly identical there is not much scope of variation and also the multiplication rate is very high that means one organism can immediately produce hundred of new organisms within a very short period of time but in case of sexual reproduction that is not the case so the growth rate is very slow now this asexual mode is commonly seen in the lower organisms for example the simpler organisms rather for example the unicellular organisms like bacteria amoeba euglena planaria tapeworms hydra etc so they, those are the animals in fact also in plants it is seen asexual reproduction where a sexual so asexual reproduction is seen in the unicellular organisms like bacteria hydra planaria so these are some of the organisms where 
asexual reproduction is seen. Whereas if you talk about the sexual reproduction, it is seen in the higher animals. For example, uh, the human beings, the flowering plants, the gymnosperms. So in those kind of, uh, in plants, actually in plants you have both asexual mode as well as sexual mode. So we will talk about these two types of reproduction in more detail as we go ahead. So in sexual reproductions, obviously sex is involved. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.